Hey everybody, this is Tommy G. And this is Pete J. And we're back down here in sunny Florida, Pete. I like it here. I do like it here. It's a pretty, pretty place. I'm gonna get I'm gonna move here. <laughs> Very well. It's, it's gonna, gonna be, be quite a commute. I was gonna say it's gonna be hard to you, you better be picking up that truck driving route from uh, uh, Fort Lauderdale <laughs> to Phoenix. Crikey, Mike. Yeah, oh, the golf's good out here. Well, maybe we'll get a chance to hit the sticks. Anyway, here That'd we are. Good. We're facing the water bullets. Uh, one of our this is the third matchup between our division rivals this this season, and wow, is it important at this point of the season, huh? It definitely is, especially against these water bullets. Um, so far, the season series is tied with one win apiece. Um, so this will be the last meeting between these two teams, and uh, they they're knotted up in the standings. So uh, both teams wanting to get that that win and and start to put some distance between behind uh, between them and the other team. Yeah, I'm looking. Yeah, we are. We're even at three games apiece. We're both 21 and 18, same record. Um, we uh, let's see for the wild card standings. We're we're both a one game back as well too. Yeah. Oh man, that is that is real close. Let's see. I didn't check to see the schedule. Well, let's see the schedule. I'm just gonna go to the schedule to see real quick whether they played their last game. Looking up the list here, the bullets. They played this. Oh, they played the water. They played the. Um, Sirloins lost eight to four. Ooh, that's a big one. And then we got some other games today. But before we do that, let's let's talk about that last game though. Uh, when we were out there in uh, wherever we were, we were out playing the the Oakland Outlaws. Benny Balmer continued to impress the Beeble of Brass when he jacks one out over the wall in center field, vaulting his team in front in the top of the first. It was a big blast. Something we haven't seen from the forty-year-old outfielder Pete. No, we haven't. But boy, he's really coming on here late in the season. He has. Then Steve Monstour cracks one out over the right field wall in the same inning with a runner on, and the Beavles begin their tear against the Outlaw. Steve Monstour also putting the gas to the pedal, trying to keep uh, it there in the top spot. Then in the top of the third, Ruby Green pushes one into the gap in right field, bringing in a runner from third and making it a 4 nothing game. Then the next batter, Bertha Banks. Makes it 5 nothing with this outfield liner into center field. And the B-Wolves continue to widen the gap. We had great pitching too, Pete, into Sean Levon. As with this strikeout of Chili Dunlap in the bottom of the third. Levon had gone to get strikeout like a half dozen, I think. He really earned a wind on the mound. He did, yeah. The pitching staff as well, we talked about that uh, during the game, was um, re really kind of turned around here in the fourth quarter of the season. And we're seeing a lot better pitching out of the whole staff. Yeah, and I didn't expect to see that kind of performance from Levon. He, he's he's impressed more than he has disappointed this season. But in, yes, the yes. in the bottom of the fifth, though, he missed the mark on this pitch to Bailey Reynolds, and she almost takes it out. Uh, she hits it off the wall in right center field, earning her three bases and bringing the runner home from first to break the shutout. Put him on a bus. <laughs> yeah, there he goes. The B-Wolves then pick up an error on the same side with this grounder back to the mound that Levon alertly throws to home getting the runner caught in the rundown. But Bertha Banks holds the ball a little too long again, and the runner scores the second run for Oakland. But then, in the top of the eighth, the Beavles put together two sacrifice bunts to gain another couple of runs, first with this beauty by Freddie Knox down the first base line. And then this one by Magic Moore to put the game officially out of reach. Two real nice sack bunts that really kind of broaden that gap to to make sure they weren't going to come back. Aiden Strong, though, tries in the bottom of the eighth as he treats the home crowd to a fireworks show after this blast over the wall in left center field, bringing the Outlaws to within four, hitting that one into the trees, and like you said, giving the, giving the crowd a little something to cheer about, or at least not to leave yet. <laughs> but the game would end when the closer, Smack Avery, delivers to Easton Meyer with one out in the bottom of the ninth. Meyer grounds it to Dexteris, who tosses to second for one before the relay to first for the double play, and the B-Wolves end up on the better side of another one-sided contest. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was a good game. It was a good game, and the, the B-Wolves are putting it all together. Like we mentioned, the uh, the pitching is there. The hitting has come back. Um, the fielding is, has been good. Again, it's not hard when the pitchers are keeping the ball basically in the infield, so it, it makes yeah. it a lot easier that way. Um, well, and that's what they need to do going in. We, we talked about it in game 34 or 35. You know, the only thing they can do is, that, you know, they just got to keep winning. You know, and that's the only way they can exert any sort of pressure is just to keep winning. And that's what they've been doing. 
Well, to give you a better idea where we're at now, we got 11 games to tell you about. Uh, so we're going to go over those first. And one of the, the important one, I think, for us is the sirloins and the platter pie in San Diego. But let's start it off with the burners out in Oakland right after we were there against the Gold Coats. Pete, you want to go with that one? Sure. The burners travel to take on the Gold Coats. Gold Coats jump out to an early lead. They're able to hold on and win 7 0. Wow, it's big. The Buzzards come to Oakland to play the Outlaws. The Buzzards take them 3 2. Burners travel to Philadelphia to take on the Freedom. The Freedom beat them 5 to nothing. Wide loads out in San Diego against the Moon Stars. All wide loads to start, all wide loads to finish 7 3. The Arctics travel to take on the Saute. The tobacco and forth battle, and the Saute take it 4 to 3. Those sirloins and the Platypi. It's close, and the Platypi take it 3 2. All right, the Blowfish taking on the Burners, who have struggled as of late, but they take that one 6 to 2. Big upset. The Overdogs, the Jackson, Houston, not an upset. 7 nothing Jacks. Nemesis in the hot corners. Nemesis out to an early lead. They hold on and win 6 5. Ooh, the Buzzards, another game in Oakland against the Outlaws, and this time the Outlaws get revenge 6 2. Gold Coach travel to Philadelphia to take on the Front Runners. It's a back and forth battle, but the Gold Coach win at 7 4. Battle at the top, Gold Coats hanging on there for supremacy. So start us off in the Pathfinder or the Pioneer Conference Pathfinder Division, Pete, would you? You got it. Pioneer Conference Pathfinder Division, the Blowfish sitting atop the Pathfinder with a record of 26 and 14. Behind them, uh, two games behind them, are the Crocodons, who are sitting in second place with a record of 23 and 15. Well, there will be no repeat. Last year's champs are 19 and 18 and five and a half games back, the Moose there. Well. Um, down in the Uncharted Division, though, the Wild Pigs, no big surprise, still at the top of the list with a with a 25-14 and 14 record. I'm looking around now, and that is second best to the Blowfish. Uh, they are a full game and a half ahead of the San Diego Platypi, who are making a run at the Wild Card, possibly that, that division. Um, they are 24-16. and 16. Down in the Journey Division, the Grapplers... Sitting with a record of 19 and 18, find themselves with a game and a half over the second place Sandcats, who are sitting there with a record of 19 wins, 21 losses. And uh, as I said, they're a game and a half behind the Grapplers. Well, the Cats could still do it, but they got to win the Journey Division to make it. The Explorer Conference Seafair Division, like we see those Gold Coats are front runners, just got through with their fight. The Gold Coats come out on top. They're 21 and 19. They got in a full two game lead now ahead of the front runners and the Heaters, but it's not over. No, it's not. And down on our very own trade division, uh, still in first place, as they have been, I think, almost all year, uh, the Sirloins with a record of 24 and 16. 24 wins, 16 losses. Uh, they got a winning percentage of 600 and a, a league best run differential of plus 68, Tom. Uh, just behind them in second place, the Herbisaurs with a record of 22 and 17 find themselves a game and a half behind in second place. And our very own Bean Wolves with a record of 21 and 18 are two and a half games behind the sirloins and in third place, tied for third place with the water boys. Wow, yeah, well, then the Curiosity Division, the San Diego Moon Stars have just about wrapped it up there. They're 25 and 15, a full three games ahead of the San Jose Sawteeth, who are 22 and 18. It's not totally over, but the Sawteeth basically got to win the rest of the Moon Stars, got to lose them. That's true, that's true. And as we look at the uh, wild card standings right now, over in the Pioneer Conference, uh, the blowfish, wild pigs, and grapplers are uh, got a, uh, are in by virtue of, of winning their their division. Uh, right now, the uh, early wild card are uh, the wild card contenders, the crocodons, and uh, the crocodons and the platypi actually are in a two way tie for the wild card. Um, crocodons getting the nod because they have a pl- they have plus they have w- only one. <laughs> okay, how do I yeah. phrase this? The crocodons <laughs> have a plus thirty five run differential, while the platypi have a plus 34, so that's going to be a tight race. That will probably go all the way down to the wire, Tom. That, that is, that's about as tight as you can get. I, I, yeah. I already feel bad for whoever comes out on the bottom that has to go to next season, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's going to be a hard pill to swallow. Yeah, and then on our side, you know, you got the Moon, moon Star, Sir Lines of Gold Coats all knotted up, and right now it's the Herbisaurs who are holding that wild card spot. Uh, they've got a plus 43 run differential, which is better than any other team in the running, um, except for the fact that the Sawteeth are only a half game back behind them. So the Sawteeth, although they're out of the the division race almost, they they're only a half game back from the from the wild card. And then you know you got the Beewolves and the Water Bullets. Whoever comes out on top of today's game is going to be right in there too. That's true. Yeah, and like you say, and if if they uh, if you end the season with the same 
the same uh, record, well, then it's going to the deciding factor will be the run differential. So yeah, um, it's uh, yeah with that plus forty three, you got to hope the herbivores start losing, so they <laughs> yeah. don't add to that run differential, and then of course. Uh, the Beavers have to win, and they have to win big. They have to start put hanging a lot of, of runs on their opposing teams to yeah. try and catch up. And four of our last five games are divisional games too. I mean, we if we win this yeah. Water Bolts game, it puts us in a good spot, and then we're up against the Herbivores. But we have to beat yeah. them. And, and yeah, then, that would that would go a long way, especially if we could put a beating on them real good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, that brings us to today's game. We are close. This is game forty of forty-four. There's only four more after this. Uh, this is the second to last performance for our starter. It's the 21 and 18 Beebles against the 21 and 18 Water Bolts. You couldn't find two teams that are more closely matched. The Water Bolts are doing mostly for their speed, but they've got solid power. Not a ton of contact, but their bullpen's also respectable as well. We're going to be putting our starter out, like I said, Hurley Bender's second to last regular season performance. The right hander throws the ball hard. He puts crazy junk on it, and he's really accurate. He's got a 4 and 3 winning record on the season. He wants to keep it in the win column. He's got a 4.81 ERA. He'd like to whittle down a little bit. He's got a 1.38 WHIP. That's true. And uh, behind, backing him up, uh, the notable players: the lower Franco over first base with excellent power, very good ability to connect, and very good speed on the base pass. She's hitting 3.74, nine home runs. Hanley Dexteris, the superstar shortstop, who's been playing like a superstar as of late. He's got that better than average power. Uh, excellent, uh, uh, very good ability to connect and, and very good speed on the base pass. He's hitting 385 with 13 home runs. Bertha Banks, the third baseman, she's locked in right now and she's got better than average power, better than average ability to connect and, and uh, about average speed, but uh, she's outplaying her career stats right now by virtue of being locked in. She's hitting 389 on the season with five home runs, Tom. Wow, yeah. And like you see, Dexteris is still the top ranked player in the league at this point in the season. I checked that before. The yeah, game. he's. Yeah, number one on the uh, league leaders for uh, overall performance. Yeah, and there's a lower, but Franco's got the best uh, on base percentage, followed by Hanley Dexter. So right there, you can see on the left. Uh, anyway, they're going to be going against the starting pitcher, Ian Murthright, the left-hander for the Water Bullets. Murthright throws the ball hard as well. He puts fair junk on it, and he's really accurate. Strangely enough, Murthright has an 0-3 record on the season, so he's really hoping to turn that around. His ERA is only a 3.86, though. So uh, I don't know what's happening there, and he's got a one-three-one whip. Uh, maybe he's not getting the offensive production, but yeah, yeah. I thought I, we may have even beaten er, Mirth Wright in our first uh, our first get together here. Backing up Mirth Wright, that uh, will be uh, Baca Harris in right field. He's on fire. He's got less than average power. He's got uh, better than average ability to connect and better than average speed. Obviously, he's outperforming his career stats right right now. He is just so on fire. You want to just hit him with water, <laughs> just throw water on him, you know, just, just ooze. Um, he's hitting 316 with five home runs. You got Jackson out in right field. He's got excellent power. He's got about average ability to connect and uh, average speed on the base pass. He's hitting 292 with 11 home runs. And then Iceman Majors over there at third base, working them glasses. You go, Iceman. <laughs> you go with them glasses. He's playing third base. And he's locked in. He's got about average power. He's got uh, excellent ability to connect and excellent speed on the base pass. And, of course, because he's locked in, he's outperforming his career stats. He's hitting 324 with four home runs. Yeah, two of those notable players played elsewhere last season. You know, Ronos Jackson won the championship with the Moose. He was a good addition by this team. And Iceman Majors was playing third base in Oakland. Uh, and he's, he's good to, glad to get out of there and get on a winning team, too. He's playing well yes, this year. That's going to bring us to the, the the lineup from the assistant coach. Looks like this. Starting off, you'll never guess, because she's been out a little while, a little tense. Gina Torrance, one of, the, one of the best batting averages in the league, one of the top four. She's going to lead off and play second base today. She's going to be followed up closely by Hanley Dexteris, who's playing shortstop, like you said, also the top-ranked player in the league right now, Dex, Dexteris. Uh, third base will be the locked-in Bertha Banks, and she will bat third and play third. <laughs> Betting fourth in cleanups is Alora Franco, as usual, always there. She's like the Iron Man of baseball. Buster Biggs will bat fifth. Buster Biggs played the left field after being relieved several times um, by... Uh, who was playing left field before? Was it Benny Balmer? Well, check this out. So batting six, Magic Moore is going to play center field. Uh, seventh is going to be Eliza Peck catching. Uh, right now, Steve Monstour is just going to take a rest. 
Nobody's I, tired. I'd let him rest. I okay. think he's played the last couple of games in a row. That's true. That's true. We'll bring Preck in and make sure uh, Monster is good for the last couple. Benny Balmer scheduled to play right field because he's locked in. So that's a that's a suggestion from the... Um, so, yeah, this is the coach has... Oh, yeah, because Billy LeBoink is uh, a little tense. Okay. So okay. They, that's why they got Balmer um, playing out there in right field. Okay, and then Hurley Bender will bat ninth and he'll pitch. He throws the forefinger, the two-finger, the curveball. Oh, no, the cut finger, the curveball, and the slider. So, ah, the old confines, Pete. The old confines. Old El Viejo nice at moon. night. Nice moon out here tonight. I heard they're going to throw a parade for us, Tommy. <laughs> yeah, they, Our return to El Viejo. I heard there's going to be a nice parade out there. Las Idiotas. <laughs> That's right. In the ears. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we got our start. Yes, sir. I got me some cigars. We're going to go out of these. Water bullets are going to have Baca Harrison right field. Batten first. Iceman Majors at third base. Stone at second. Jackson in center field. Ken at first. Snow catching. Parker in left field. Man at shortstop. And Ian Mirthright pitching. As the water bullets take the field, Gina Torrens will grab a bat. Hanley that stares and Bertha Banks will get into the on deck circle. Ian Mirthright bringing his 3.86 ERA into the game. And we're going to get this one underway, Tommy. All right, sir. Gina Torrance, the second baseman's neutral and fifth in 367. Two home runs, 10 RBIs on the season. First pitch from Mirthright is in there for a called strike. Strike one. Allen's low ball one. One ball, one strike. That's in there. Catches the outside corner for a second strike. That one's inside. Two balls, two strikes, nobody on, nobody out. That's ball three, and the count has gone full to Gina Torres. Allen's low ball four. Torres takes her base. So a leadoff walk for Gina Torres to get things going here. She almost swung at a couple of those. Had to pull the bat back like she did. Hanley Dexter is hitting 385 with a free runner on first base. First one outside corner hits that into the gap into right center field. That's going to go in, and Harrison pick up to keep Gina Torres at second. Two on and no outs. Pressure coming up. The third baseman. Yes, sir. And in steps Bertha Banks. So two on, no out. Uh, Banks, the third baseman, locked in and fit. She's hitting 389. Five home runs. 99. That one's just catches the outside corner for a cold strike. That one's inside. Ball. That one's up. Ball two. Two balls and one strikes to Bertha Banks. That one's low ball three. Looks like Mirthright's trying to stay away from her, not giving her anything to hit. There's a smash, and that's going to be caught by Justice Man at second. Uh, he's got a shortstop. He's going to flip it to second for one out. But uh, Bertha Banks and Gina Torrens are safe, so runners at first and third with one out. All right, good good offense here going so far. Only one out. Pressure up, like you said, runs the corners. <clears throat> Scoring position here. The 13th pitch by Miss Mirthright misses low. That one's in there. Gina Torrens fouls it back, almost hits the batter on deck. One apiece. High, good eye there by Bertha Banks. We're out. Two and one at the top of the first year. Still no score yet. Swings at a bad pitch up high. Still aiming for that batter on deck. That one's also fallen down the line. She's getting the pitch count up. Pitch number 18 coming in from Mirth right here. Ah. Swing at a miss, strike three, and she goes down. She swam before he even released the ball. <laughs> Two down now. Runners at first and third. Uh, Buster Biggs, the left fielder, stepping in. Buster Biggs hitting 288. Five home runs, 20 RBIs on the season. The single scores a run. Come on, Buster. First pitch is in there for called strike. Strike one. That one's inside ball one. One ball, one strike with two outs. Mirthright seems to be struggling here in the first inning. That one's fouled off along the third baseline. Out of one ball, two strikes. That one's high. Evens the count up. Two and two. Went outside off the plate. Three and two. Count call is full. And that's popped into center field. Everybody's going to be running with two outs. Jackson. Hieronymus Jackson is under it to make the catch for three outs. So the B-Wolves were threatening a little bit, but couldn't couldn't make it pay off. So uh, no runs, one hit, no errors in the top of the first. Baca Harris, Iceman Majors, and Christian Stone going to face off against Hurley Bender, who's coming to the mound with a 4.81 ERA. Yes, sir. Baca Harris on fire, 316, five home runs, 24 RBIs. We've seen him do damage. We've seen a couple games on TV, you and I, and he's performed well, so his stats bear that out. First one misses for a ball. That one fouled hard off the net. We've got one apiece. Great contact hitter, Baca Harris. 
with fair power. Files that one off down the first baseline. Still at one and two. Got a Beatles fan back there standing up. Oh, that one's hit hard down the line, but that's going to luckily to foul. Souvenir. Third base line. The crowd like that. They're on their feet cheering them. Swing and a miss on a great slider outside by Bender to get his first K. Really took the wind out of the sails there. Like we say, Iceman Majors. Standing in the left-hand portion of the batter's box. Loves his home here in Florida. Southeast Florida, Fort Lauderdale. That one misses for a ball. One though to count. Gets a piece of that breaking pitch, but fouls it off. We're even at one apiece. Bottom of the first, no score. Early Bender getting ready for his eighth pitch. Gets a signal from Liza Peck. He winds up, throws it. Swing and a miss. Inside corner, strike two. One more to go to put him down. Oh, that breaking pitch misses just low. It was a good pitch, but he didn't chase. We're even at two apiece. Better looking for the right signals. Throws one high, pops it up. Hanley Dexter is running up to catch it. Gets that one in the infield for the second out. Looked like he lost, may have lost it in the lights. And that brings up Christian Stone now. In 273, second base. The water bullets. Hits a hard one Oops. in the right field. That's going to land in there fair. Betty Balmer picks it up. He's going to throw it into the cutoff. He's going to slide into second for a clean double. And the water bolts get a little bit of offense now. The pressure Jackson. up. That brings in Hieronymus Jackson. So the outfield's going to play deep for Hieronymus. And he got a fast runner at second base. So Hurley Bender throws that one. Oh, and that gets into the gap in right center field. Benny Balmer coming home, but he's not going to make it. The run comes in and scores. And the water bullets get the first notch in the belt. And that brings in Amelia Kent. Now you got a runner at first base with Kent at the plate. Watches the first pitch in there for a strike. One of the count. Got the bender up to 14 pitches with this throw right here. That one's high for two strikes. Quickly 0-2. He's got Kent right where he wants her. Oh, that pitch goes low. She's still yet to swing the bat. She's patient. She's looking for it. Gets a roller there to Torrens who bare hands it, throws it to first to close it out. Unfortunately, the Water Bullets are able to get on the board first. They score one run on two hits. So it's Water Bullets one, B Wolves nothing as we head into the top of the second. Magic Moore, Eliza Peck, and Benny Ball are going to face Mirth right who threw 24 pitches with a strikeout, oh, gave up a walk in the first inning. Magic Moore, the center fielder, is neutral, but he's got good connection versus the left handed pitching. He does it. He's facing a left-hander, and Ian Murthright throwing his 25th pitch to start the second inning. That one misses ball. Like you said, you can watch more than you swing at because he doesn't seem to find the zone. He got a one strike there. Misses on the ball. And, yeah, Murthright's got to make some adjustments to try and get these across the plate. That one crosses for a strike. 2-2. Two two. Magic Moore yet to swing. Good patience outside there. Now we got 3-2 and two full up. And that one's outside, but he reaches for it, fouls it off. We're still at 3 and 2. 31st pitch is high. Magic Moore swings at it, pops it up, and it doesn't look like it's going to carry. Waving it off in left field is Parker. He pulls that one in for the first out. One down, Eliza Peck, the catcher, comes in. She's neutral and fit, hitting 227, a home run, nine RBIs this season. One out with the bases empty. That pitch is in there for cold. Strike, strike one. That one's popped. That's going to land into center field for a clean single, and Eliza Peck is standing at first base. Uh oh. <laughs> with only one out. Thought she was going to go there. Up comes Benny Balmer. We got locked in, but playing great. Hitting 424 on the season. He's got a real slow runner at first base, so he's got to punch one out to get her there. And that's a liner right in the middle oh. of stone who goes to second first for the double play. Double locks play. her out. Yep. Well, they pick up another hit, so it's uh, B Wolves, no runs on two hits. Water Bullets, one run on two hits. Smoke Snow, Ariel Parker, and Justice Man got to face Bender who threw 16 pitches with a strikeout, gave up two hits in the first inning. One to nothing. Smoke Snow, the catcher is neutral and fit, hitting 222, six home runs, 26 RBIs on the season. That's a lot of twos. That is. Two, two, two. <laughs> Swing and a miss, and Bender was out in front of Snow on that one. No balls, one strike. Bender delivers a little outside. Ball one. Count evens up at one and one. No, nobody out. Nobody on. That's a swing and a miss. Smoke Snow was behind on that one as well. So one ball, two strikes with no outs. Bender delivers. 
Swing and a miss. It dropped. Um, third strike, and Peck will go to first and throw Smokesnell out for the first out. So Ariel Parker, the left fielder, steps in. She's neutral in fit. She's in 167, a home run, one RBI this season. Parker plays left field for the water bullets. That's in there for a called strike. Nice slider off the outside corner. That's fouled straight back, and now Parker finds herself in the hole. No balls, two strikes with one out. Bender delivers. Inside, ball one. One ball, two strikes, one out. That's fouled off along the first baseline into the dugout there. So Parker protects the plate. One ball, two strikes. Ooh, a little high. A little high. Two balls, two strikes. Bender delivers. That's fouled Ooh. off. Parker is able to protect the plate. She's not getting anything in the field of play, but she's holding the... There you go. There's a roller to Franco. She'll pick it up, make it run over. Step on the bag for herself for two down. And now Justice Mann, the shortstop, comes in. He's tense, but fit. He's hitting 270. He's got two home runs this season and 10 RBIs. Two outs, though, and nobody on base, so not an RBI possibility for Mann. Swing and a miss on that slider outside water bullets don't seem to be able to hold off of that one that one's low ball one one ball one strike with two outs justice man the shortstop for the water bullets swing and a miss and now man finds himself behind in the count one ball two strikes bender delivers his 31st pitch inside ball two two balls two strikes two outs Swing and a miss, and he gets Justice Man on a rising fastball. Three up, three down, and we're moving into the top of the third. It's still one to nothing, Water Bullets. Hurley Bender's first at bat. Gina Torrance got a walker first time up, and Haley Dexterity is one for one. Mirthright at 34 pitches with a strikeout, a walk, and giving up two hits. Hurley Bender, the starting pitcher, is neutral and fit, hitting 333 with a home run and an RBI. First pitch to Bender is lifted along the left field line, and uh, Parker's, Ariel Parker's able to get there and make the catch for the first out. Looked like it might have might have been a bloop single there. Yeah, it was a little higher than I thought it was going to be. I thought it might drop in there. And Torrance hits oh, that no. one straight to Kent at first base. He's going to toss to first. Oh, he drops the ball. She makes it safety. I was going to say it was going to be two hits, two pitches, two outs. That was a tough one. Yeah, they flipped the ball, but Mirthright was unable to capture it. So, one out, runner at first base. First pitch to uh, Henley Dexterra. It's a fly ball in the center field, and Gina Torrens is going to have to get back, unfortunately. She was halfway to second. So, two outs now with Gina Torrens standing at first base, and Bertha Banks, the third baseman, stepping in. She's locked in and fit. Well, I thought for a minute that was going to carry. And you got uh, Bertha Banks. Takes the first pitch there for a strike. One look out, second pitch, and they're also for a strike. There goes Tina Torrance for second base, the throw, they get her. And she's thrown out trying to steal second. So we're heading into the bottom of the third, still water bullets one, B wolves nothing. Ian Mirthwright's first at bat, Baca Harris 0 for 1 with a strikeout, Iceman Majors 0 for 1, Bender at 32 pitches with three strikeouts and he's given up two hits and one run. Oh. Well, Beeble's got to keep holding them off here. They eventually got to get on the board themselves. Uh, Mirthright, not a great hitter. Fair power for pitcher. Bender going right at him. 1-1 oh, the count. In the bottom of the third, still 1-0. There's a little roller to Bertha Banks. He's going to pick that up, make the one pump, easy throw to first. Get that first out with two pitches into the belt. And that brings in the locked-in Baca Harris, who's 0-1 on the day. Standing straight in the right-hand batter's box. Bender throws a slider at him, gets it in there for a strike, only on the count, with one out. Inside pitch, he fouls it off hard on the first base line. 0-2, oh, Bender's got him where he wants him. 37th pitch coming right here. Break, beautiful breaking pitch outside, out, he doesn't chase. One and a, one and two. That one's in there for another step, another K for my favorite pitcher, Hurley Bender. Now it's Iceman Majors. 0 for 1, but with a 3 2 1 average and four home runs, he's a solid contact hitter. Oh, that one just up near the hands misses. He didn't even flinch. <laughs> one no the count to the major man. He flinches that with check swing. 
Nice breaking pitch in there for a strike. One apiece. Two outs. Ooh, a huge breaking pitch up high. He swung at that one and missed as well. One and two. Let's see if Bender puts him away. Oh, he gets that inside. Pitch fouls it off first baseline. Still one and two. Oh, that one drifts outside and he doesn't chase it. We're not up in two, two, two. Let's see what Bender put him away on a 44th pitch. Hits a little roller to Gina Torrance who picks it up easy. One pump to first. And the side. All right, so far so good. If we could just get that offense going, Tom. It's still one nothing. water bullets as we head into the top of the fourth. Bertha Banks 0 for 1. Laura Franco 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Buster Biggs 0 for 1. Mirth right at 40 pitches with one noise strikeout, one walk, and giving up two hits. Banks locked in and fits. She's 0 for 1 today, though, hitting 385. Bertha Banks likes to hit home runs at El Viejo, Pete. I know this. I've seen her do it. First one is low. One no the count to Bertha. Second one also misses low. 2 0. Oh. Went at 90 miles an hour, though. Three quick balls to Bertha Banks, and he's on the verge of putting her on first for free. Four pitch walk. <laughs> Mirthway can't believe it. No, sir. So, runner at first with nobody out. Alora Franco's neutral and pitch. She's 0 for 1 today. Hitting 371, though. Bertha Banks with a moderate amount of speed and not a steal threat, though. First pitch to Franco's outside ball one. That one's popped up. That's going to be foul out of play along the first baseline. One ball, one strike to Franco. That one's fouled straight back. One ball, two strikes now. Franco behind in the count. Oh, that one's Franco. popped up on the infield. And it's going to be caught by Iceman Major, the third baseman. Bertha Banks is smart enough to stand at first. <laughs> but she did start to take off. Uh, it's uh, Buster Biggs 0 for 1. Buster wants to get on base. First one low, and like I say, most of these pitches by Mirth right are balls. Pitch number 50 in there, two quick balls, 2-0. and oh. The third one's in there for a strike, but good patience by Buster Biggs to see what's happening here. That one checks swing, it's inside. Now we got a hitter's pitch at 3-1. and one. Hard hit, and that one's gone, Pete. Wow, way to get back in it. That is way back over the right field wall. Home run by Buster Biggs. It's been a long time coming, my friend. Buster yes, it has. 391 feet. It's his sixth home run and 22nd RBI of the season. He's been in a slump. It's good to see him climb out. Yes, sir. Now Magic Moore, the center fielder, steps in. He's got good connection versus left-handed pitching. He's 0 for 1, though, today, hitting 308 on the season. Takes the first pitch for a cold strike. Strike 1. That's ripped foul along the third baseline. Strike 2. Now he's in the hole 0 and 2. Allen's high ball 1. 1 and 2. That one's lifted foul again. That'll get into the seats on the third base side. One ball, two strikes with one out. That one's low. Ball two. There's a rip. That's going to go line drive to Iceman Major to third base. He'll make the catch for the second out. Two down. That brings in Eliza Peck, who's one for one of the day with a single. Now the Beebles have the lead 2-1 in the top of the fourth. Peck hits it right past the mound in the center field. She goes two for two. She's excited to get back in the lineup, Pete. Yes, see, yes, she is. She's, she's been hitting pretty well. She's been a solid hitter. Again, not power, but she, gets, she hits for average. Benny Ballmer, the left fielder, he's 0 for 1 today. Liza Peck, not a lot of speed over at first base. Two outs now. First pitch from Mirthright's in there for called strike. Strike one. That one's high ball one. One ball, one strike with two outs to Benny Ballmer. Mirthright tense now. That one catches the outside corner for called strike. One ball, two strikes. That one's ball, two and two now. That's mm. popped up with two outs. Everybody's running. The second baseman calling everybody off, and Christian Stone makes the catch for the third out. But the B Wolves put two on the board, Tommy. Mm -hmm. So it's two runs on four hits for the B Wolves, one run on two hits with an error for the Water Bullets. Christian Stone, one for one with a double. Hieronymus Jackson, one for one, and Amelia Kent, 0 oh for one. Better at 44 pitches as we head into the bottom of the fourth. Christian Stone, the second baseman's neutral and fit. One for one with the Steeler. Made that catch to end the B-Wolf half of the fourth. Bender delivers. Ball inside. Allen's in there. Check swing. But the ump thought it was in there. One ball, one strike to Christian Stone. Allen just outside. Ball two. Two balls and a strike now. Stone hitting 279 on the season. That one's a little high ball, three. Three balls and a strike. 
Christian Stone played a big part of the water bullet victory. Swing and a miss. Count is full 3-2 and two in the second matchup between these two teams. That one's fouled off along the first baseline. That'll be a souvenir. Count is full. Three balls, two strikes with no outs, nobody on. Christian Stone gets enough of that one to follow straight back. He's protecting the plate pretty well. Swing and a miss, and Christian Stone goes down on strikes. Hieronymus Jackson, the center fielder, steps in. He's neutral and fit. One for one with a single and an RBI. Adding to Jackson's total. That's a ripped, but that's going to drift foul. Just foul along the, uh, out there in left field. So no balls, one strike, one out. There's a roller. That's going to get the Torrens. will pick it up. Double pump, make the throw to Franco for the second out. Two quick outs. And Amelia Kent, the first baseman, she's neutral in pitch. She favors the outside pitch, Tommy. But she's 0 for 1 today. Base is empty for Kent. First pitch is low, ball one. One ball, no strikes with two outs. That's fouled off. That evens the count up, one and one. Owens outside ball two. Two balls and a strike to Amelia Kent. The water bullet first baseman. That's fouled straight back. The count is evened up now. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, nobody on. And Amelia Kent in the box. That's ripped foul <laughs> along the third baseline. Two balls, two strikes. Bender locked in and fit. Oh, she takes that pitch high. Ball three. Three balls, two strikes. Full count to Amelia Kent. That's fouled off. Jeez. She's making him throw pitches now. He's up to 61 pitches in the fourth inning. That's popped up. That's going to be out of play just over the dugout along the third baseline. So three balls, two strikes with two outs. And there's a smash. That'll get the deck stairs. He'll pick it up, double pump, make the throw to Franco. Three outs. Unfortunately, they worked <laughs> over Bender pretty good there. But as we head into the top of the fifth, it's Beewolves 2, Water Bullets 1. Hurley Bender 0 for 1. Gina Torrance 0 for 1 with a walk. Hanley Dexter is 1 for 2. Mirth rate at 65 pitches. With a strikeout, two walks, and giving up four hits. Hurley Bender is locked in and fit. He's 0 for 1, but we, as we said, he can be a dangerous hitter. Number 48. Ian Murthright's going to take a seat. I guess that's all we're going to see of him. And they're going to bring in Hippie Dubs. Hippie Dubs, the relief pitcher. Dubs has a 5.22 ERA, 1.59 whip. He's got 36 strikeouts. He's just locked in and fit. He, does, he has less than average velocity, less than average junk. He's got excellent accuracy, though, and he is almost fully rested. He's known around the league as a K-man. So anytime he can get two strikes on a batter, the uh, odds go into his favor. He throws a four-seam fastball, a two-seam fastball, a changeup, and a forkball. That's quite so the a, new pitcher, Hippie Dubs, going to face off against Hurley Bender. Quite a, a different bunch of strikes. You can see it's kind of hard to read, and that one comes in there for a strike. Swings at a high pitch, quickly 0-2. Here comes the K-Man Dubs on his third pitch. Goes right at him. Oh, misses just low. Good eye there by Hurley. 1-2 the count. That one's in there. Roller right back to the comeback. We can't pick it up. And he's going to get on, Pete. He runs All it right. out. All <laughs> right. Way to run it out, Hurley. Yeah. Gina Torrens, neutral. Fit 0 for 1 with a walk today. we got a runner at first with, uh, with nobody out. First pitch from Dubs. Uh oh And that's going to be caught. Um, by Christian Stone. It was a, a blind drive to Stone who makes the catch for the first down. One down, runner on first. Hanley Dexter is stepping in. He's one for two with a single. There it goes. There it goes for second to throw. They're going to get him. Oh, man. Yeah, they pitched out to try and get him. Dog gone. He had speed, too. And now they got two outs. Uh, uh, dog, that's the second caught steal in the day. Ah. And there's a little roller to first. That's going to end the side. Kent picks it up, runs it down. One, two, three. Yes, well, that sir. One, two, three. <laughs> so we're heading into the bottom of the fourth. B Wolves holding on to a precarious one run lead. It's 2 1 B Wolves. Smoke Snow 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Ariel Parker 0 for 1 and Justice Man 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Bender at 63 pitches with five strikeouts on the day. Smoke Snow up now 0 for 1. Yeah, this is a really tightly matched game here. Two real teams that are real close. Swinging a miss outside corner strike one to Smoke Snow. The catcher for the. That one's hit hard to Bertha Banks. It picks it up off the skip, throws it to first, 
But at first out, two pitches, one out, much better pace thus far. He's an Ariel Parker 0 for 1 who's struggling this season, hitting 158. Um, she has enough power to put one over. She's done it once, uh, that being her only RBI. Nice curveball in there for a strike. Parker doesn't even go for it. Oh, one to count. Bottom of the fifth, 2 1 Beavos. She goes at that one, fouls it off on the third base line, and quickly 0 and 2 in the hole. Bender gets her on the slider outside corner. She doesn't swing. She tips the hat. He tips it back. How many K's is that now for six? Six. Justice Man now up 0 for 1. The tense Justice Man. Over the crowd trying to get him into it, though. Trying to get these water bolts to tie it up. First one misses in their ball. 70th pitch from Bender is a curveball that makes it in there for a strike. And the crowd quiets down. And what a piece. Swing and miss strike two. Quickly went from being excited to thinking this is going to be it. Bender looking to put him away. He winds up, throws it. Outside corner. The jump. Oh, by, by Gina Torrance. She picks it up, is able to stop it, but not pick it up. And the runner gets first. He's going to hold there with a single, and that brings in the pitcher, the locked-in pitcher, Hippie Dubs. The K-man with fair contact, and the pressure's up now. With the runner at first base for Hippie Dubs, who's playing a good game so far, watches the first pitch in for strike over the count. It's a tough position for the water bolts to be in. Oh, a hard hit to right center field. That's going back against the wall. Moore chasing it down. He's coming into the cutoff. They're going to have to relay it home, and the runner's coming in. It's going to be a tie game, Come on. Two of the pitcher nails one out to right center field. There you go. And now that brings in Baca Harris, who's locked in. Now the crowd's hoping they could take the lead back in this inning. That one misses up near the hands. Ball one. Baca Harris. That's a hard hit down third base line. Oh, one and one. Coming at him fast. Hits that one, fouls it off, breaking pitch one and two. That's a hard hit to take it to the exterior. He picks it up. He's going to throw it to first and beats him out to end that side. Well, unfortunately, they're able to put another run on the board, so the uh, the uh, score is tied 2-2 as we head into the top of the sixth. Bertha Banks 0 for 1 with a walk, and Laura Franco 0 for 2 with a strike on a Buster Biggs 1 for 2 with a home run. Hippie Dubs at eight pitches and giving up one hit. The third baseman. Bertha Banks locked in and fit 0 for 1 today with a walk. Hopefully, she can get a hold of one here. Come on, Bertha. First pitch for Dubs is over the outside corner for a called strike. Strike one. That one's low, ball one. One ball, one strike. There's a smash, but that's going to drift just foul along the third baseline out there in left field. One ball, two strikes now to Banks. There's a smash. That's going to get into the gap. And that's over everybody's head, and she's going to second. She's going to try and stretch it to third, and she's going to be in there, Tom, for yes. a triple. Lead-off triple by Bertha Banks. Way to go, Bertha. Yeah, man. And with, and with now, Bert, now, sorry, Laura Franco up with no outs. The pressure up top of the six. Beagle's really threatening to score again here. That one right there for a strike. Oh, one the count. Locked in, hippie dubs. Tries to get her chasing outside. Good patience. Ball one, one piece. That one's hard. Hit the left field. Is it going to stay fair? No, it's going to drift just far. And it's a foul ball, one and two. <laughs> to Alora Franco. That one outside corner, she doesn't chase. Good patience, two apiece. 17th pitch from me. That's a little liner, and that's gonna land in there, Pete. And that's gonna be a single. Parker picks it up, and the Beagles have recaptured the lead now, 3-2. All right, and Buster Big steps in. Uh, he's playing left field, he's neutral fit. One for two with a home run, two RBIs. Runner at first base with no outs. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Biggs was a little excited about that one. Was way out in front of that one. There's a roller to uh, it's kind of a swinging bunt. Buster Biggs is thrown out at first, but they, they was able to move the runner to second base. So one out, runner at second with Magic Moore stepping up. Yeah, good for the, only the one out now. He got a runner in scoring position. And Magic Moore hit 306. Oh no, that's a Dang pop it. up. Dang and it. Laura Franco's gonna have to come back. I don't even know. I don't even know why I try power swings. They never work. <laughs> Eliza Peck, the catcher, is neutral and pitches two for two with two singles. Two outs now with a runner at second base. Let's see if Peck can get another single here. Ooh. First pitch is in there for called strike. Strike one. On outside ball one. One ball, one strike with two outs. That one's outside ball two. Two balls and a strike. Allen's high ball three. Three and one now to Eliza Peck. 
There's a roller that's going to get into yes. that's going to get into center field, and here comes the runner from second all the way around the score. It's now 4-2 B-Wolves and Benny Ballmer stepping in. Wow, what a night for Eliza Peck so far. 3-3. Three three. Benny Ballmer though 0 for 2. Benny trying to hopefully try to turn things around here. He switches to the right hand the left hand nope. batter's box. Fouls that one off souvenir. Third base line. Oh what a count. That one way outside. Ball one. I don't think he thought a peck was gonna run. Nope. Inside pitch, it's a little roller to second base. Don't picks it up, whips it to first, ends the side. But the B-Wolves put two more on the board, so it's B-Wolves four runs on eight hits. Water Bullets two runs on four hits with an error. Iceman Majors 0 for 2. Christian Stowe 1 for 2 with a double and a strikeout. Hieronymus Jackson 1 for 2. Bender at 78 pitches with six strikeouts, giving up four hits. Majors calling his shot. The, the third baseman calling his shot, even though he's 0 for 2 today. Hasn't been able to get a hit. There you go, smart Alec. <laughs> Bender's first pitch is in there for cold strike. Strike one. Allen's fouled straight back, and now Majors finds himself in the hole. No balls, two strikes, no outs, and nobody on here in the bottom of the sixth. That one's a, a liner to Bertha Banks. It went nowhere close to where he was pointing, Tommy. Christian Stone, the second baseman, he's tense but fit. He's one for two today with a double. One out now, base is still empty. Bender delivers. That's in it for cold strike. Strike one. Bender up to 82 pitches. That one's low, ball one. One ball, one strike with one out. Stone anticipating that last pitch. That's fouled straight back. One ball, two strikes now. Christian Stone finds himself behind in the count. That one's inside. Count evens up two and two. Bender neutral and fit, throwing his 86th here. That one's low. Now the count has gone full. Three balls, two strikes with one out. Christian Stone, the second baseman. That's a roller to... Bertha Banks will pick it up, make the throw to Franco to get Christian Stone and the second out. Two down now. Hieronymus Jackson, the center fielder, stepping in. He's one for two today, a single and an RBI. And playing center field for the Water Bullets. Two outs. First pitch is outside, ball one. One ball and no strikes to Hieronymus Jackson. Bender up to 88 pitches, make that 89. That'll go to Gina Torrens. will pick up, double pump, over to Franco for three outs. Now we're going to head into the top of the seventh. And it's still 4-2 B-Wolves. Hurley Bender, one for two. Gina Torrens, 0 for two with a walk. And Henley Dexter is one for three. Hippie Dubs is at 28 pitches and giving up four hits. I love it. Me too. Come on, B-Wolves. Let's put some more on the board here. Hurley Bender is back to being locked in and fit. He's one for two with a single. No outs, nobody on top of the seventh. That's ripped foul along the first baseline. Strike one. That's inside. Ball one. One ball, one strike with no outs. That one's low ball two. Two and one. That's lifted high and foul out of play. Two balls, two strikes with no outs to Hurley Bender. Oh. He popped that one on the up on the infield. Shortstop is there, calling everybody off, and Justice Man is able to make the catch for the first out. So one down. And Gina Torrance stepping in. Yes, the Gina Torrance, the 0 for 2 Gina Torrance, who wants to go 1 for 3. Um, hits a hard one to Diving Stone, who picks it up, throws it the first, gets her. Oh, for dog, three. she's going back into the tank. <laughs> <laughs> and the next there is the shortstop. He's neutral and fit. He's 1 for 3 today with a single. Known around the league as a tough out and a utility player. Two outs here in the top of the seventh. Dexterous takes the first pitch for a cold strike. Strike one. Allen's a roller down the third baseline, and Iceman Majors picks it up, but he's not going to make the throw yes. in time. And Dexterous beats it out for an infield single. Only Dex with that kind of speed. Bertha Banks one for two with a triple to walk. The pressure up now here in the top of the seventh. Beagle's already with a two-run lead for two. That one makes the high side of the strike zone. Oh, one the count. Got a fast runner at first. That one misses for a ball. What a piece. Two outs. Oops. Swinging this early. Why? One and two. Goes to first. Does not get Dex. Dex ain't going that. He's not that dumb. Here's the pitch. Misses ball low. 2-2-2. Two, two, two. There goes Dex for third. Hard hit. Bertha Banks. Everyone's going around, but that's going to be caught by Hieronymus yeah. Jackson in center field to end that side. 
Banks didn't think she could let that one go. She would have got called out on strikes on yeah. that one. Um, B Wolves for Water Bullets, too, as we head into the bottom of the seventh. Amelia Kent 0 for 2. Smoke Snow 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Ariel Parker 0 for 2 with a strikeout. The first baseman, number 62. Amelia Kent 0 for 2. She's, uh, she likes the outside pitch. What can I tell you? <laughs> Hurley Benner getting ready to throw his 90th pitch to start the seventh inning. Swing and a miss. The bottom of the seventh inning. That's in there for a strike. Over the count to Kent, who's a power hitter. Now misses a pie. In fact, the outfield's going to drift back a little bit for Kent. You never know. It's a hard one there down the line, but luckily at third base, that's going to be foul. And we're at one and two. Some fans standing up here hoping to cheer her on. Ooh, check swing. Bender almost got her on that outside. Cut finger. Breaking pitch misses just inside now. We're at full count three and two with no outs. Hard hit down there, first baseline foul. Still stuck at full. Wind up delivery, oh, and she doesn't chase. It was a good idea, but she walks. And now Kent is at first with no outs. The tying run at the plate, Smoke Snow, but he's 0 for 2. Kent has fair speed. Better keep an eye, his velocity's coming down a little bit here. Oh, that one's missed by Franco. And Balmer's going to throw it into second to hold him up. Now the single runners at first and second with no outs. And that brings in Ariel Parker, who's 0 for 2, hitting 150. And the water bolts keep her in. Um, interesting there. Bender hoping for a double play. Looking for the right pitch. Gets the signal. Check swing. But no swing. Ball one. One of the count. Second pitch. Oh, that's oh, into the gap. You gotta Benny be Ballmer's going to be coming home with that one. And we got no outs. And the bases are loaded. Yeah, I think and that's the end of Bender. Pressure's way up. And here comes J the tense Justice Man. Bender just shy of 100 pitches, 99. But uh, he's got three a walk and two hits. Now that's going to bring in Benson Rushmore, the reliever. Benson Rushmore's 5 6 8 ERA, 1 2 6 whip, 24 Ks. He throws the ball hard. He gets good movement on it. Not entirely accurate, but he's well rested. There's a four-finger, two-finger slider to the curveball, and we're hoping for this fresh arm could start to put away some batters. You need to strike out, man, here to really get back in this. Check swing strike one. That's a good start. And one the count here, bottom of the seven, four, two B wolves. That one's in there for two quick strikes, and Bender's got him where he wants him. Third pitch into the dirt. Good trap by Peck to keep anyone going. One and two. Swing and a miss, strike three. It's exactly what you needed from Benson Rushmore. Now a double play roller could end this. And the pitcher, Hippie Dubs, comes up and goes down. They're going to they're gonna do the wise move. They're going to pull him out. They're going to bring in the pinch hitter, the third baseman. Harry Bracketeer is going to pinch. He's uh, fair power in contact. He's fast if he hits on. He's got power against left-handers, but he's facing a right-hander. So not a bad choice. <clears throat> Benson Rushmore hoping to get him to hit into a double play. A swing and a miss. Strike one on that one. Oh, the count. Second pitch. Hard hit to Gina Torrance, who's going to toss the first over to or second over to first. They get the double play. Close it out, Pete. Yeah. That's right. Way to go. Great defense out there. They're pulling uh, Harry Bracketeer, though. They're going to bring in the closing pitcher, Dante Hamilton. Dante Hamilton has a 4.94 ERA, a 1.23 whip, 13 strikeouts on the season. He's neutral and fit. He's got less than average velocity. He's got. Excellent uh, junk, drugs. He's got excellent <laughs> drugs. <laughs> He's got excellent junk. He's got the uh, best. A better, yeah, <laughs> better, better than uh, average accuracy. He's fully rested. Uh, he throws a four seam fastball, a two seam fastball, and a slider. So as we head into the top of the eighth, it's still B Wolves four, Water Bullets two. Alora Franco one for three with a strikeout. Buster Biggs one for three with a home run. And Magic Moore 0 for three. Dante Hamilton bringing his 4.94 ERA to the bump in the top of the eighth. Alora Franco, the first baseman, one for three, a single and an RBI today. The first shot, that's it. she takes that deep, and that's going, and that's gone. She went yard with that one. Alora Franco finally gets behind one, puts it out there into uh, right center field. It traveled 432 feet. There was no question about that one. That's her 10th home run and 28th RBI of the season, Tommy. Well, nice to see her get back on the home run trail. Oh, yeah. She loves hitting home runs in Florida just like anybody else does, Pete. That one misses a pie. Ball 1-0 to Buster Biggs, who's now looking to get his second home run. 
That one misses low. Good patience, Buster. Two and all the counts is reward. That one might break oh, no. pitch makes it in a liner. Straight to Major the third to catch it for the first time. Poops. That's poops. <laughs> Magic Moore, the center field steps up. He's got good connection versus left-handed pitching. And he's up. He's going to be hitting right here. Takes the first pitch for called strike. Strike one. That one's a low ball one. One ball, one strike with one out. Nobody on. That one's low as well. Two balls and a strike. That's in there for called strike. Two and two now. Oh, oh! That just kept catches the high inside corner for a called third strike. Magic Moore's down on strikes. Boy, 0 for four for Magic. Now the, on the other side of the coin, Eliza Peck three for three. Her average is up to 261 now. First winner for a strike. Dante Hamilton coming right at him. He's fearless. That one's ball though. Ball one apiece. Two outs. Oh. Hard hit souvenir. Look out, people! I wouldn't want to catch that thing. One and two to count. No, and he gets two Ks. No, you. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. <laughs> you liar. <laughs> oh, outside corner. Okay, so we're heading to the bottom of the eighth. It's 5-2 uh, B-Wolves. Baca Harris 0 for 3 with the two strikeouts. X-Men Majors 0 for 3. And Christian Stone 1 for 3. Baca Harris, the right fielder, is locked in and fit, even though he hasn't hit the ball all day. <laughs> you be locked in, Baca. I think it's the same thing. How are you locked in going 0 for 3? First pitch is inside ball 1. One ball, no strikes with no outs. There's a roller that's going to get to Gina Torrens is going to lay out, make the catch, and wow. throw to Laura Franco for the first out. One down, Iceman Majors, the third baseman. Also 0 for 3, still pointing at things. I don't know what he's pointing at because he doesn't hit it out there. Allen's fouled off along the third baseline. No balls, one strike with one out. Benson Rushmore throwing his 10th pitch here. That's popped up way up into the air and Buster Biggs makes the run over and makes the catch for the second out. Two down and once again didn't go anywhere close to where Iceman Major was pulling the podium. Christian Stone one for three with a double but Stone is tense. Stone has actually hit the ball and he's tense. Everybody else <laughs> has not hit and they're all locked in. Fouls that one back straight back for uh, uh, first strike. Allen's fouled straight back as well, and now Christian Stone finds himself in the hole. No balls, two strikes with two outs, and nobody on in the eighth inning. Allen's just a little old ball one. b -Wolves holding on to a three-run lead, 5-2 in the bottom of the eighth. There's a roller to bounce to Rushmore. He'll scoop it up, make the throw to Franco for the third out, and we're heading into the top of the ninth, Tommy. Hey! b -Wolves, five runs on ten hits, no errors. Water Bullets, two runs on six hits in an error. Benny Ballmer, 0 for 3. Benson Rushmore's first at bat, and Gina Torrance, 0 for 3 with a walk. Dante Hamilton's at 13 pitches with two strikeouts, and he's given up one hit. Benny Ballmer's neutral and fit. He's 0 for 3 today, though. Seems to have cooled off a little bit. Started off, uh, balls high. Was that Poke Foster? Poke Foster was the one who... There's a yep. shot. That's the straightaway center field, unfortunately. Ooh. And it doesn't have the distance. Hieronymus Jackson's able to track it and make the catch for the first out. One down. Good try, though. Ben, Benson Rushmore stepping in. Are we going to let him hit, or I think uh, can, Yeah. Right? Yeah, he's still okay. fresh. He can, he can close things out here. He's got more power than most pitchers. Oh, Watch that's the first high. For a strike. Uh, second one's right in there, but he's a late swing. Dang. One, two. Dante Hamilton trying to put him away in three pitches. A little roller foul ball. 19th pitch by Hamilton. High, good check swing. Way to bring that bat back, Benson. Hard hit foul ball, to, and Hamilton's coming at him quickly. Rushmore should step out of the, the box and get, make him. Oh, ah. swing and a miss. He gets another K. I think it's a third K for Hamilton. Gina Torrens, the second baseman. She's tense, but fits. She's 0 for 3 today with a walk. Uh, she's struggled as of late. We were really hoping we'd see a breakout game by her, but she's struggling, continuing to struggle. First pitch is inside ball one. The second one's fouled off along the third baseline. One ball, one strike with two outs. Make that one ball, two strikes with two outs. Torrens lifts that oh, one oh. in foul territory, oh. and it's going to be caught by Iceman Majors for the third out. So nothing much to write home about there in the ninth inning as the b wolves head into the bottom of the ninth holding that three run lead it's b wolves five water bullets two hieronymus jackson one for three amelia can't oh for two with a walk and smoke snow one for three with a strikeout hieronymus jackson the center fielder's neutral and fit one for three with a single and an rbi 
It's all down to this. The outfield playing deep for Jackson. The water bolts need to turn things around fast and big in order to get out of this. But right now it looks like the B Wolves are going to take this one and go ahead. There's a liner to Banks who picks it up off the ground in the second pitch. Gets that first out pitch with two away from climbing over the water bullets in the standings. But they got to get past Amelia Kent, who's 0 for 2, who's also a power hitter. And the outfield's going to go deep for Kent as well. The locked in Benson Rushmore delivers his first fastball in there. It's a strike, swing and a miss, 0 and 1. Gets the signal, winds up, throws it, check swing strike 2, 0 and 2. Benson Rushmore looking hot on the mound today, Pete. Hot! Ooh, hard pitch on breaking one. That's going to trip foul. That's going to be a souvenir for a happy Water Bullets fan. The crowd into it now. They know what you can do. 20th pitch is in there for a strike. Puts it away. Oh, Benson. Benson. Mamut. Smoke Snow comes up. One for three. With a signal. And he's the last batter that Rushmore can get around to put this game on ice. First one misses. One out of the count. Rushmore's excited. He's at 22 pitches with this throw. Gets a signal from Eliza Peck. Throws it. Misses, though. Ball two. We're at 2-0. Two, oh. two outs in the bottom of the ninth. There's a pop-up to right field. Benny Balmer's back close to the wall. He's going to jump, but he didn't get it. That's a home run just barely over that wall in right field. And, uh, yeah, Balmer didn't extra time that. Snow Snow's seventh home run and 27th RBI of the season. The crowd's got something to cheer about. It's not over. But in comes Ariel Parker, who's one for three, hitting 190. So this is who Rushmore wants to face. Swing and a miss, strike one. The pressure up here. Bottom of the night is now 5-3. B-Wolves, two-run lead. Ugh. Misses it's, that one, skips off the ground. Good try. What's going on, Benson? What's going on, man? <laughs> By Eliza Peck. It's a little shaken Ugh. after that home run. Swing yeah, and a miss, strike two. Not hitting his marks at all. One and two. Now Come he needs on, one man, more. Really? That one in the dirt. 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Can he do it against Ariel Parker? So we get a strike three. There's the game. Whoa. Oh, oh the win. Rushmore limps to the finish line there. I don't know what was going on, but I, I didn't hit any mark on that one. <laughs> what a oh. win, huh? We take it. Yes. Yes, boy. The big wolves. Both teams wanted that bad. It was, a, it was a good, close game. The fans letting the team hear about it. Um... They may have slid out of the way. The Beagles, on the other hand, have a fighting chance, Pete. Look at how this game went. The water bolts started with that offense. Bottom of the first. They go out first. Beagles come back, launch out ahead. Water bolts tie it in the fifth. Beagles come back at two more. The sixth, which you don't see in the seventh, was that base is loaded with no outs. And uh, the Beagles got exactly what they needed when they brought in Rushmore. He struck out the first batter, and then they hit into that double play to get them out of a clean they get one more in the eighth for insurance. The Water Bolts put up that home run uh, in the bottom of the ninth, but it wasn't enough. The Beagles get five runs on three hits. No, I'm sorry, five runs on ten hits to the Water Bolts, three runs in seven, and they pick up an error in the process. Yeah, that was that was a prize fight right there. That was, I mean, like you say, you go through uh, the first three innings, only scoring one run. It was a tight game. Everybody was playing tight. Uh, um, and, wow, what a game. It was a good game. Yeah. Yeah, it was a struggle for Gina Torrens, who goes 0 for 4, uh, but she still has a 355 batting average. She got on once because she got walked. Um, you know, everyone else did pretty well. You got a 2 for 4 Dex, of course. Banks got one on there, Franco. Uh, Buster Biggs 1 for 4, but his one was a home run. Eliza Peck 3 for 4. Breakout yeah. game for Eliza. Yeah. Benny, Benny Balmer struggling at 0 for 4. Uh, but still, a great season for that backup hitting 378. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and from our backups, like I said, we talked about Poke Foster. <laughs> Excuse me. Poke, <laughs> Fo Poke Foster, who uh, led off the previous two games as the first time at bat. He, uh, he, he. So we're getting a lot of good production out of our bench players right now. Yeah. Over there, you look at the water bullets, though. You know, you really only had one one player who had more than one hit. And that was yeah. Smoke Snow, the catcher. He went uh, two for four. Um, Hieronymus Jackson and Christian Stone, one you know, one for four. Um, you had Parker and Mann. They were, uh, Mann was one for three, but Parker was one for four. Um, you know, Hippie Dubs actually got a hit in an RBI, so good for him. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I mean, they had some of their top hitters, you know, Harris and Majors, both hitting over 300 batting average on the season. They go 0 for four today. 
In fact, Harris strikes out twice, fans twice. So. Yeah. Smoke Snow, the, the catcher, good, good for him. He, you know, he gets a home run. Yeah. But uh, that one, yeah, just, just, just got tucked inside yeah. the wall there. Just, you know, just, and had, uh, um, had. Um, LeBoink jumped, for, or no, it wasn't LeBoink. I guess it was Brown right, out there. Had he Ball. jumped, he may have been able to steal that, and he didn't. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. P pitching, Hurley Bender gets the win. Way to go, Hurley. He goes six innings, gives up six hits, one hit per inning, only two earned runs, walks one batter, strikes out a half dozen. Uh, his ERA falls now to a 4.65. He's now 5 and 3 on the season. He will end the season with a winning record, uh, as he should. Benson Rushmore comes in and gets the coveted save. He throws three innings, gives up one hit, one earned run, the home run, strikes out three batters, three batters in three innings, and uh, his, his ERA is now 5 4 He's 0-1-2 on the season. And then over there for the water bullets, Ian Murthright started the game, went four innings, gave up four hits, uh, two earned runs, walked two, gave, struck out one, gave up a home run. His ERA is at 3.92, and his record is 0-3. Uh, Hippie Dubs will get uh, collared with the loss. He pitched three innings, gave up five hits, two earned runs. His ERA is at a 5.27, and his record falls to three wins and four losses. And then Dante ha Hamilton, who you got to keep an eye on this guy. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know much about him, but, but he's, he's a pretty good uh, yeah, pretty good uh, closing pitcher. Hamilton comes in, pitched two innings, gave up a hit and an earned run. Struck out three and gave, uh, gave up one home run. His ERA is at 4.91, and his record is one win, two losses, eight saves, Tom. Yeah, Hamilton, like you said, I mean, only gave up one hit in two innings. It just happened is to be a, a home rookie? run. Is he a rookie? I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to look him up after the game. Players of the game first. <laughs> All right, the first player of the game, Alora Franco, the first baseman. Two for four today with two RBIs, and she scored two runs. Also hit that home run. She did a so she got a nice little winter home down here in the Miami, in the Miami area. Uh, Buster Biggs got the second start again. The B plus rank Buster Biggs who has been absent, a wall for a long yeah. time. We've been looking under benches for Buster Biggs, and yeah. he he comes in number thirty nine goes one for four. I mean he only got one, he only got one hit uh, at his four at bats, but it was a home run and it was a, it was a two two bag two. It was a tour, a <laughs> tour of guys. He gets that run himself. That's right. And then the uh, third star of the game, the hometown boy, uh, Smoke Snow, the catcher of good old number six. He goes two for four with a home run, an RBI, and he scored a run. That's right. Tommy G with five hits, one home run, two RBIs, and three strikeouts for a contribution of 52%. Pete J with five hits, one home run, three RBIs, one great catch, and six strikeouts for a contribution of 48%. I don't, I don't get that. You've got one more RBI. you got... Twice as many strikeouts, and you got a great catch. How, how did I get a higher contribution? It's all politics, man. It's all politics. <laughs> I guess so. I guess I like the cut of my jib. Right, I well, guess so. <laughs> well, post game show down here in in, uh, in a moonlit night in Fort Lauderdale. That was what we needed. That was what we needed and uh that puts us let's see if we go to the standings right now and we will go to the standings right now we're still in third place but we are one game at, we are solidly in third place now alone two games out of first and um only a half game behind the herbivores who we play next well yes sir we're, a half, we're a, yeah we're a half game out of the wild card well we're a half game behind the herbivores in the division and we're a half game behind the Herbosaurus in the wild card race. So yeah. a win in Seattle and Tacoma would be huge. That's, yes. that's a lot riding on that, that next game out at the Emerald Diamond. The Emerald Isle. <laughs> yeah. And you got all the pitchers for the rest of the season. That's going to be a Beavis-Ortiz affair. Ortiz is going to take the mound against Jem Qualita. That's, I mean, this was a big game. Bender against Dubs, Ortiz against Qualita. That's a big game. Ugh. Yeah, it is. It's yeah, it all, is. It's all, it's all for Qualita. the money. Four-seam yeah. fastball, two-seam fastball, cut fastball, a curveball, and a slider. That's a chase. 78 <laughs> velocity, 57 junk, 76 accuracy. Now, you wanted to check out... Uh, who was who was up there on the hippie? No, Dante Hamilton. Right. 
Dante Hamilton. Uh, no, he played here last. He's, this is his second season here. He's 29. He's making. So he's still young. He's making six one. Yeah, he's he's an A minus rank closer. He's a closer. Right. Um, but his uh, yeah, I mean last season he had a two six three ERA. ERA. This season a four nine one. He's one and two on both seasons. Um, saves five last season, eight this season. Um, yeah, I mean in games, where's he game twenty? Yeah, I mean or, yeah, it's crazy. He's I'm sorry. His velocity is fifty one. His junk is a ninety nine. He bends the ball like nothing. And he's 77 yeah. accuracy. He's, I, yeah, I would, I'd consider letting Smack Avery go for Dante Hamilton if he were available. Uh, don't tell Smack. Don't do that. I will. <laughs> well, so far over the over the, the past two seasons, Avery's got a record of one and four with 13 saves. Oh. So that's his career with the B-Wolves. That's pretty good, too. And, and not, to take, not to take anything away from from Smack Avery. Smack Avery's he's the real deal. He's he's good. To, all right, a little bit of news around the league too. After the game here, we found hell, hell of a shepherd gets signed onto the wide loads, uh, replacing Giannis Friedman. Giannis Friedman has been a wide load, I think, for many seasons. A 33 year old second base, third base. Giannis Friedman uh, got released. He's B plus ranked, known mostly for his fielding and his power. Uh, but he had good contact and speed in the 50s and an arm as well. He's a solid 33-year-old second baseman. He's making seven, six million. He picks up hell of a shepherd who I think played for. I thought she played for the um, the nemesis. Got let go. The 32-year-old shepherd is left fielder, outfielder, known as a whiffer, um, known mostly for her contact. So she's that's the only way. That's only she's only a be slightly better contact hitter than um, than uh, Friedman. And uh, but she makes a lot less. She's 2.7 million, so uh, she'll be wearing. She'll be playing in Apple Field, New York, to close out the season and maybe into the playoffs. So I, boy, I feel bad for, for Honest Friedman. Yeah, yeah. And then Tats Belfort has gotten a little overconfident on uh, on his pitching skills, and he's uh, lost 10 on his junk. So he goes from a 62 to a 52 in junk. This is not what we need as we head again. Against the herbivores and the sirloins, that's not what we, that's not what we need, Dad. No, no, that's a, yeah, that's a ten point draw. That's considerable. I mean, fifty two. He's still just slightly above average, but uh, I I like that bell for breaking pitch. Yeah, I've been relying on that thing. Uh, uh, there's a new training opportunity for Jahan Levan, <laughs> but it's a little out of reach right now. It's uh, for one point two million dollars. We can get him to throw the spitball. <laughs> it would add six or fourteen to his junk and two to his accuracy. Uh, Ten percent chance to gain ball prone, but uh, like I said, I don't think that's in the cards. I don't think we have the money for that. And over there for the buzzards, Gabby Gans gets signed onto the buzzards, replacing Julian McCormick. What? And we had uh, we were keeping an eye on Gans, so she's she's moved over to the buzzards. They've they've jettisoned Julian McCormick, a superstar player. He's got 94 power, 99 contact, 76 speed, 75 fielding. He's got a 68 arm, and he was making 20 million 400 thousand. And they pick up Gabby Gans, who is a C plus uh, right fielder catcher, 33 year old right field catcher. Oh. Um, and of course, Julian McCormick, the 34 year old shortstop infielder. But yeah. Gans has a 48 power, 57 co ability, uh, 57 connectivity, and 54 speed. So she's about an average offensive player. Um, yeah. You know, nothing that compares to the power and the, the ability to connect and the speed that, uh, that McCormick had. She's got a 49 fielding and then a 24 arm. So uh, almost even a, a bit of a, a defensive um, letdown. Uh, she, she's yeah. uh, good, pr uh, about average fielding, but she doesn't have an arm, which makes you wonder why you would put her out in right field. Yeah. Um, well, as, yeah, again, I'm supposed to um, McCormick with the 75 fielding and the 68 arm. So he, he could, you know, and he's playing shortstop infield, so he doesn't yeah. have to throw the ball that far. Yeah. Um, but he was making 20 million four hundred thousand. She's only going to make two two million six hundred thousand. So yeah. um, Buzzards may be starting to uh, try and. Yeah. Uh, Pull in some cash. 
Yeah, yeah, the Buzzards are going to be out of the, the playoffs, so they're, yeah, they free up almost $18 million with that thing. But, wow, McCormick was the top-ranked. I, I remember when we started before last season, he was the top-ranked free agent. Uh, he got signed to the to the Warblers uh, for, like, almost 20-something. And then he gets let go of the Warblers. He gets picked up by the other Colorado team. So he hasn't played for anyone other than Colorado. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to see where he's going to go somewhere. I mean, he's not going to... He's not going to retire at 34. Uh, he'll be somewhere else next season, but wow. Hmm. All right, yeah. So There's a lot of people on the free agent wire right now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that thing is. Yeah, and he's Julian right. McCormick is a, obviously the superstar, but Artichoke Sample more. Yeah. Uh, a right fielder, outfielder. Kaksha Emin, the A-minus shortstop second base. Yeah. Tyson Lowbrow, the A minus center fielder, outfielder, known as a tough out. He's got the tough out. That that first whole half of that page is B plus or higher. Yeah, yeah I mean you got some big names on there. Yeah, like you said, Kasha Emin, Jonas Friedman, Rhonda Horn, Isabel Stevens, Kings of the Savage, Ellis Locos. I mean, I know all those names, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, McCormick's not gonna get a picking up. I mean, anytime soon. Thirty one point seven million he's asking. That's the problem. Is it's like you know, I'd love to be able to go and pick up, you know, start poaching, but I, you know, yeah. I, I don't got thirty-one point seven. I have to shed nobody half my does. teeth. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Nobody has that kind of money. Which is exactly what the teams that aren't making the playoffs are doing. They're shedding yeah. most of their team and they're picking up, you know, trying yeah. to pick up some of these big name players. Yeah, say yeah that's say when the when the off season comes, one of those teams, uh, you know, a, a rebuilding team like uh, who's who's been rebuilding? Oh, the Nemesis. Yeah, I could see them going for a Julian McCormick. Well, although they got Jock Sports there. I don't know. Anyway. Chasey right, Kim. Well, Chasey Kim's out there. Yeah, we're gonna, we'll, have to take a, we'll have to take a look at that before uh, before too long. But um, Olaf slack off. No. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, I guess we got to get going. It's been nice. Yes. Let's, we'll have to end this game. But there's 17 other games before our next one. I don't must be interested in watching one of those. We got the wide loads of the Sandcats. Sandcats are making a run. Um trying to see what else looks big on there the grapplers have at least four games oh yeah oh, four wow, out of yeah. 17 games you know the two That's against the arctics one against the crocodiles and then they got another one against the freebooters yeah three of them in, all four of them in san jose the, the the host team for all those um the herbivores are gonna be out at the buzzards in colorado that'll be big um heaters of the crocs is kind of a big one um yeah but they just shed julia mccormick yeah. yeah, good luck with that, right? Yeah. All right. Well. Yeah. All right. Well. Anyway, what's that? Yeah. I hope the herb uh, the budget beat the herbs. Yes. Okay. Well, we'll let you go there. Uh, we we will then catch uh, flight and head from here out to Seattle, Tacoma, and um, I'll stop in the garage see what, see what's going on there and we'll, we'll face the. The Herbosaurus for a huge game at Emerald Diamond, so be sure to tune in for that one on today is when so yeah, that'll be that'll show up on Monday. Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, big 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 game. Make sure you show up. Good. All right, well then we will see you there and then until then this is Tommy G. And this is PJ, and we're saying get out of here.